Welcome, everyone. Thank you. It's a pleasure to introduce our speaker for today. He's a, a friend. He's a colleague. He's an inspiration. He's someone who has taken the values of transpersonal psychology and wedded them to business, finding ways that he can bring his heart, his intuition, and his brilliance together in order to create amazing ways in which commerce travels the world. He was the founder of Men's Warehouse, building it from one store in Houston, Texas, to an empire worth billions in assets. But the thing that I think he will say he's most proud of is the opportunity he had to build a staff who adored him, who respected him, who felt very, very committed to these ideals that all of us are holding so close to our hearts. More recently, George has gone off to start a new venture with his ever-curious mind and ever-determined attitude, and it's now Generation Tux that is the bellwether of a new form of commerce, where instead of going into bricks-and-mortar stores, people are able to harness their desire for these celebratory events when you rent a tuxedo or rent a suit with the kind of love and uh, overwhelming sense of passion for our families. And to do this using the internet and using a, a, a means of delivery that allows people to uh, lessen the anxiety that comes when we're trying to prepare for major events. George is also an honorary PhD here at ITP. And this degree was given to him because of his amazing scholarship. George reads more than almost anyone I know and reads prolifically all the time and has in-depth analysis of every aspect of our humanities, of our science, of the frontiers that lie ahead. And so he's particularly appropriate to have as our commencement speaker this year. I welcome you, George Zimmer.
here's a business example of this idea. The idea of the importance of being open to new ideas. In 1999, a district manager from our Seattle area suggested over dinner that we test the idea of renting tuxedos in his Seattle market. Despite objections and challenges and resistance from other executives, the risk-reward trade-off had enormous potential. If Men's Warehouse could successfully rent tuxedos inside its existing stores, it could be enormously profitable. So we ran a pilot test in the Seattle area and it turned out to be a huge success. Now, I am no longer part of Men's Warehouse, but I have been able to start, as Marilyn said, an online tuxedo and suit rental company called Generation Tux, which proves that the old adage that there can be a silver lining to every dark cloud must be true. As most of you present today already know, there are other sources of wisdom and ways of knowing. Even back when I started Men's Warehouse, I always trusted my intuition. I always relied on my gut instincts, particularly when decisions were difficult to make. And the more I've listened to my intuitive voice, the stronger my trust in that voice has grown. My involvement with the Institute of Noetic Sciences over the last 20 years has reinforced my belief that being open to inner and outer knowing provides the best balance for both personal and career understandings. After the 9-11 tragedy, Men's Warehouse business dropped precipitously overnight, down 20%. My CFO recommended that we cut our expenses, starting with the $2 million that we were about to spend on our annual Christmas holiday parties which were beginning six weeks after 9-11. My gut told me that employee morale was so low that we needed to view the crisis as an opportunity to come together at our parties and affirm our resolve to face the challenges together as a corporate family and as Americans. We traveled around the country, and at each holiday party, we displayed a large American flag that had been flown alongside the railroad route that took Abraham Lincoln's body home in 1865. It became obvious from the spirit generated that season that holding the parties was the right decision based on an intuitive hunch. Now I'd like to share some thoughts about leadership. I believe that leaders lead best by focusing downline, not upline, as is taught in fine universities. Being more concerned about helping the people they lead rather than impressing their supervisors is what I believe in. I've learned that leaders lead best by caring about the people they work with and helping them be successful. This leadership approach is sometimes referred to as servant leadership, an interesting juxtaposition of words. Servant leaders create win-win-win opportunities that benefit employees, customers, and of course shareholders. At Men's Warehouse, we didn't just pay lip service to the words, we walked the talk 
and strive to live like servant leaders. Here's one way we demonstrated our commitment throughout the Men's Warehouse Corporation. Each year, we flew 3,000 store managers from around the country into Chaminade, Santa Cruz, California in groups of 250 for three days of training. This was a very unusual training program for a national retail company because airfare alone cost in excess of a million dollars. But additionally, key executives made in-person presentations instead of using videos, and they stayed around for dinner and socialized with the attendees after the training sessions ended. Employees had the opportunity to give feedback and raise questions and felt that their leaders respected their opinions and feelings. But the positive impact of servant leadership applies just as well for other workplaces. When you focus with your heart as well as your mind on the success of the people you serve, they will trust your authentic caring and be more open and committed to meeting the challenges they are facing. And you don't have to have a job title of manager or executive to become a servant leader. And it's not about money. My last thought relates to transforming shareholder capitalism, which is the way we practice capitalism in America. And for the record, I am proud to be a capitalist. For public companies, Stock price and dividends are the criterion for success. Business decisions are made from that perspective. But I convinced our board of directors and executives, at least until I was dismissed, to make decisions by first considering their impact on our employees and customers. We changed the traditional shareholder capitalism model into a stakeholder capitalism model. All stakeholders had a seat at the table. We wanted to prove to our employees that they were as important as our bottom line. So how did we do this? Well, we created a corporate culture that led to our being named one of Fortune magazine's top 100 companies to work for nine times. We made it important for our store teams to have fun at work, such as our National Pizza Day, when we had Domino's Pizza deliver 50,000 slices of pizza to our 1,200 stores and offices. In addition to the before-mentioned annual holiday parties, we held summer picnics for our employees and their families. We recognized outstanding employees by rewarding them with a week-long company-paid vacation to Hawaii for two. As I also mentioned earlier, we spent more of our budget on employee training and in development than almost any other retailer. And last but not least, I personally gave out scholarships from my family foundation to children of our employees to the tune of about $10 million over 20 years. Because our employees felt that they were valued and respected, they made our customers experience in the store unique, a special experience. This in turn made our business strong and therefore our shareholders ultimately benefited. In closing, I want to recognize the fact that you are graduating in tumultuous times. Not to mention 
probably being up to your eyeballs in student debt. But I look on the bright side. Things could be worse. When I graduated, it was just two weeks after the Kent State killings where National Guard soldiers shot college students on campus. Three weeks after I graduated, I was drafted for Vietnam. Just think, all you have to worry about is solving global warming and maybe a little international terrorism. <laughs> as long as people see themselves as separate and distinct from each other, and entire countries feel the same separateness and anxiety, there will always be plenty of work for Sophia University graduates. The collaborative curriculum at this university has prepared you to be part of the solution. You already understand the wisdom inherent in heart-to-heart -heart communication. It used to be called the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Never has this been more important than today. In my life, both personally and professionally, I've found that the golden rule is simple to understand, but sometimes difficult to follow. Whether things in my life have turned out good or bad, I carry with me a sense of contentment and pride because I am living my values. Live by your values and you will experience similar feelings. I guarantee it. Thank you and good luck.